So, you have an Xbox Series console, but you're looking for some great JRPGs to play? Let me enlighten you on 10 fantastic JRPGs you can enjoy on Microsoft's newest consoles. When it comes to JRPGs on the Xbox, let's be honest, it could be better. With that being said though, there are still some amazing JRPGs available to you if the Xbox Series X or the Series S is your gaming weapon of choice. Lately, I've found myself gaming on the Series X more than usual, and it got me to thinking, what are some great JRPGs available to me on this spectacular console? Today, we're going to talk about 10 great JRPGs available to play on our Xbox Series consoles and what makes them so special. But before we get started, be sure to let me know what JRPG on Xbox you play to satisfy your need for adventure. With that being said, let's talk about 10 fantabulous JRPGs available to play on the Xbox Series consoles. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch Remastered, released on September 15th, 2022. Nino Kuni is a fantastic JRPG, and when it got a release on the Xbox, I couldn't be happier. Nino Kuni is one of those games that looks cute and sweet, but not 30 minutes into the game, it destroys everything you know and love so far, completely betraying the experience you were expecting to have. Nino Kuni might look familiar, and that's because it is. It looks like it was ripped fresh from a Studio Ghibli movie. Actually, that's fair. Studio Ghibli did work on the animated cutscenes, and this continues even into the in-game art style as well. And that's not even where the similarities end. The soundtrack is also very inspired by Studio Ghibli movies. This all makes it an incredibly beautiful and welcoming experience. As for the gameplay, the best thing I can explain it as is a hybrid turn-based action Pokemon system. You can get monsters, evolve these monsters, and have them fight alongside you with special abilities and super moves. There is also a giant world map. It offers tons of exploration, and this is something that you don't see these days, so it's nice to see a traditional world map. It's a lot of fun, and not exactly the easiest game under the sun, but it's a blast to play through, and one of those games that you just won't want to stop playing. Yakuza Like a Dragon, released on November 10th, 2020. Like a Dragon is the eighth mainline installment in the long-running Yakuza franchise. Up until Yakuza 7, Yakuza 0 through 6 were action beat-em-up games with slight RPG elements, but Yakuza Like a Dragon goes full-on turn-based RPG, and I feel it was a perfect fit. Yakuza has always had an RPG feel to it, with its storytelling, subquests, and incredibly in-depth characters, but with an action combat system. The jump to a turn-based system was just a no-brainer, I feel, and it works perfectly well given the kind of game that Yakuza is. In true Yakuza fashion, Yakuza Like a Dragon is incredibly silly, right down to that battle system. In fact, the whole reason that the game is turn-based is because Ichiban really likes Dragon Quest, and as a result, views his life as if he is a Dragon Quest main hero, and as a Dragon Quest main hero, he has to wait his turn to fight. It's basically one huge fever dream of his, and I'm here for it. I love how they use the Yakuza humor in a way to explain why the games have changed the gameplay style. Yakuza Like a Dragon is another great JRPG that deserves to be played, especially if you enjoy serious main stories, with a side of goofy subquests. If you've played any other Yakuza game, you know exactly what the experience is going to be like. You can jump into this game without playing any of the previous games in the series, but just know, you might not get the full experience, as it does feature some previous characters like Kiryu and Majima at some point. Just a bit of a warning if that's something that concerns you. Lost Odyssey, initially released for the Xbox 360 on February 8th, 2008. Lost Odyssey is one of the few JRPGs that were exclusive to the Xbox 360 that many fans have been begging for a remaster of to other consoles for years and years. Thankfully, it was added to the Xbox Series console's backward compatibility lists, so this is one of the few JRPGs that the Xbox has that isn't available on any other consoles. 
Lost Odyssey is a turn-based RPG, often touted as the true Final Fantasy XIII, as it was written by Final Fantasy's hero Nobu Sakaguchi. Sidebar, Final Fantasy XIII Trilogy is also on Xbox, and it's actually the best way to play it, so... Uh, hint hint, nudge nudge. Anyways, back to Lost Odyssey. Lost Odyssey is a turn-based RPG following the story of Kame Arganar, an immortal lieutenant with amnesia. Most of the game's story is revealed through the Thousand Years of Dream sequences, but these sequences are rough, and by rough, I mean depressing. Like, incredibly depressing. Outside of the incredible, emotion toying story, I really enjoy the combat system that Lost Odyssey has. It uses a context-sensitive turn-based system somewhat like Legend of Dragoon or Shadowhearts, where you use an attack and then you hold the right trigger and release the trigger at the right time in order to do critical damage. It adds quite a bit of flair and interactivity. Anything that prevents you from just mashing the A button until the victory screen appears is a good thing in my mind. However, I will say, just keep in mind, Lost Odyssey is a bit slow with its progression in combat, but if you stick with it, it's absolutely worth it. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster Collection, released for Xbox Series consoles on September 26, 2024. Seriously, why did it take so long for this to come to Xbox? It's mind-boggling, but at least we got it, right? Anyways, the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster Collection consists of Final Fantasy 1-6 through with remastered soundtracks, remastered graphics, and as true to their original forms as possible. I know this is a point of contention with a lot of people. On one hand, it's nice to have these games on modern consoles, but since they are based on the original versions with simple quality of life enhancements, they don't have any of the extra features that were added in re-releases of the games. So this means none of the Dawn of Souls dungeons from Final Fantasy 1, the extra dungeons in Final Fantasy 4, or any of the extra espers in Final Fantasy 6. I've heard both sides of the argument, lots of people are happy with what we got, but others see them as lazy because nothing was added from future releases. That being said, I'm personally very happy with this collection. For these releases, they come with the aforementioned graphics and soundtrack, but these releases also feature boosts. You can multiply your experience, gill, or ability points by 4, or turn off the encounters entirely. This is great for people who just want to simplify grinding, or just want to play through solely for the story. Every one of these games are great and deserve a playthrough, not to mention how they are a core part of JRPG history. Persona 5 Royal, released on October 21st, 2022. Persona 5 Royal is the latest in the ongoing Persona series, and often touted as one of the greatest games of all time. Personally, I have not played the Royal version of Persona 5, but the original is up there as one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. If you've played any Persona game before, you know exactly what to expect from this. Great dungeon crawling, characters with some of the best development, and some of the smoothest combat to ever grace the genre. Persona 5 Royal has everything the original had to offer, but adds a new character Kasumi, adds a new dungeon, a thieves den to unlock and view art, character models, and music, and it just streamlines a lot of the gameplay and so much more. Realistically, there's no reason to play the original release anymore over this version. Persona 5 is just one of those games that sucks you into its story and characters so well that when you eventually finish it, it leaves you with a feeling of emptiness. It's sort of hard to explain, but Persona 5 feels like more than just another JRPG adventure, but more of an entire emotional experience where you become attached to each party member and every single event that happened throughout the game. If you enjoy JRPGs, you owe it to yourself to play Persona 5 Royal and enjoy some of the best storytelling of all time. You know, I can't do a video without talking about ease at least once, right? Not sure if that's a blessing or a curse. Ease Origin, released on April 11th, 2018, is the only Ease title to get an Xbox release. I've talked about Ease several times on this channel, but Ease Origin is a bit different, in the sense that it's actually a prequel to Adult's Adventures, and it really explains the whole backstory of Ease, especially Ease Books 1 and 2. Ease Origin is honestly just solid fun all around. It's a quick-paced adventure full of button mashing goodness to slaughter enemies to your heart's content. Keep in mind though, as this game was originally released in 2006, 
It isn't the most graphically pleasing game, but the music and gameplay are incredibly fun and make up for it. With three different characters, each with their own story, there is a ton of fun to be had. The only downside is that if you really love Ease Origin, it's the only one available to you unless you have a PC or a different console to jump into the Ease franchise. Speaking of which, I actually recently did a video on where you might want to jump into the series, so if this interests you, maybe check that video out after you're done here. Play Ease, you won't regret it. It's quite easy to get into. See what I did there? Okay. Yeah, I deserve that one. Blue Dragon, released on August 28, 2007 for the Xbox 360. This is another game that is available to play on the Xbox One and series consoles through the power of backward compatibility. Xbox is great for that, isn't it? Blue Dragon is one of the most charming JRPGs I've ever played. Like Lost Odyssey, it was developed by Mistwalker written by Sakaguchi, composed by Yui Matsu, and art done by Toriyama. Blue Dragon is just super fun, and in fact, is one of those games that makes me feel like a kid all over again. It has Dragon Quest vibes with its simplicity, but at the same time, also features a super robust job system that offers an incredible amount of customization. Mixing and matching abilities and passives can let you create some downright broken characters, and I'm all for it. Nothing gives you that same feeling as when you've worked for hours or even days trying to level enough to get that certain ability to tie your whole build together. And don't let the visuals turn you off, this is a game that you should absolutely not miss. If anything, revel in the fact that us Xbox gamers have a game that isn't available anywhere else. Nintendo has their exclusives, as does Sony, but Blue Dragon is something that stands out from the crowd with its unique aesthetic style and ridiculous humor. Blue Dragon is a jewel, and if you love turn-based job system JRPGs, then Blue Dragon will fill you with joy and happiness. Near Automata, released on June 26, 2018, is the sequel to the 2010 release of Nier. I'm sorry to admit that I actually haven't played through Nier Automata yet, but that doesn't mean that I don't really want to. I played a bit of it immediately after I played the remaster of the first game, and I remember the story feeling incredibly natural, and the combat being smooth as butter. Honestly, I feel a bit ashamed at the fact that I haven't played this game yet. Anyways, Nier Automata has its story told across multiple playthroughs in true Nier fashion, and each playthrough goes deeper into the stories of characters 2B and 9S. Honestly, I really love this style of storytelling, where each playthrough slowly reveals more of the overarching plot or from a different viewpoint. Of course, this is something that only Yoko Taro is capable of. Man is absolutely a storytelling genius. Action JRPGs like this are a dime a dozen, but Nier Automata feels unique in the sense that it mixes bullet hell with an emotional story as well as buttery smooth action combat. The fact that its combat is so good shouldn't come as a surprise though, as Nier Automata was developed by Platinum Games, known for other games such as Bayonetta, Metal Gear Rising, and Transformers Devastation. I might actually have to make this my next game, or at least one of my next games to play, because it's a crime I haven't gotten around to finishing it yet. Dragon Quest XI released on December 4th, 2020. Honestly, this has to be the pinnacle of turn-based JRPGs in the modern age. Dragon Quest has always been a huge part of my life, and I'm so glad it's becoming more and more mainstream as the days go on. Dragon Quest XI on the Xbox One is actually the definitive re-release of the game, featuring all the bonus features, such as 2D mode, which lets you play it like a Super Nintendo top-down pixel RPG, and the ability to travel back to worlds from previous Dragon Quest titles. Dragon Quest XI is another game that I cannot speak highly of enough. It's got a gorgeous cel-shaded art style, such lovable characters, and an absolutely fantastic overall map ripe for exploration. Clearly made for longtime fans of the series, however, you can easily jump into this as your first Dragon Quest game. In fact, I've seen several other JRPG YouTubers jump into this as their first game and then proceed to binge the whole series because they enjoyed it that much. The difference with Dragon Quest XI, though, compared to a lot of previous Dragon Quest games, is the characters are much more explosive and dynamic. Silando, for example, is fabulous, 
Veronica is sassy, and Eric is probably one of my favorite JRPG characters in recent years. Go on, play Dragon Quest XI and experience perfection in its purest form. Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance, released on June 14th, 2024. This is one of the most recent releases for this list. Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance is a re-release of the Switch exclusive of the same name, but with extra features such as new difficulties, rebalanced gameplay, and an entire new storyline. Again, this is a game where I've only played the original release and haven't gotten around to playing the expanded version yet. Shin Megami Tensei is one of Atlas's longest running franchises and is what spawned the Persona series. Where Shin Megami Tensei differs though is that Shin Megami Tensei is more action and gameplay oriented as opposed to Persona's character and social link focus. Shin Megami Tensei is a series that I just really want to get into. I've only played a brief amount of 4 and I love the original Shin Megami Tensei 5, so this is a game I can easily recommend to anyone who enjoys darker stories with a relatively high difficulty level. I personally enjoyed the storyline of Vanilla, but I hear the new storyline is 10 times better, which makes me even more interested to give it a shot. With the press turn system, the demon recruiting, the dark story, and the flashy attacks, this feels as if it's perfect for anyone who found Persona a bit too lighthearted for their personal tastes, but still wants a dark adventure. So there you have it, 10 great JRPGs available on the Xbox Series consoles. The Xbox is not generally thought of when it comes to JRPGs, but if you look hard enough, you'll find some absolute bangers that will blow your mind. I'm aware that most of these are not exclusive, but if you only have an Xbox, this is to remind you that you can still love your JRPGs. Did I miss any JRPGs on the Xbox that you feel deserve to be mentioned? If so, make sure to throw them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want more great JRPG content, be sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. This has been Shinky, thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.